Alright, so ray tracing released about four and a half years ago with the launch of the 20 series graphics cards, and back then, ray tracing was really just a neat feature that like very few games had. And uh, even if you had a 20 series graphics card, you probably still didn't use it because even the top tier graphics card at that time, the 2080 Ti, uh, could barely run ray tracing. So you probably didn't use it anyway. <laughs> but then came along the 3090, which I would say was the first graphics card that could comfortably run ray tracing. And you wouldn't just turn it on to see what it looks like and then turn it off. You would actually play the games with it as long as you were okay with around 60 FPS when you're playing your games. But then came along the 4090, which can run damn near anything, especially with its new uh, frame generation technology. But uh, I recently upgraded to a 4070, which is about as powerful as the RTX 3090. Okay, well, I mean, it's about 13% slower, but still, it's a really powerful GPU. And I've been playing a bunch of games recently, most of them having ray tracing, and I've played all those games with ray tracing, even some with DLSS 3 frame generation. And man, I still don't use this shit. And as a matter of fact, I think, I think I'd go as far to say that I think ray tracing is still bad. Not like ray tracing as a whole, but it just seems like nowadays when games get ray tracing, either one, they didn't need ray tracing in the first place, two, when they get ray tracing, it's a really shitty implementation of ray tracing. Uh, or uh, three, they get full RTX support uh, and it looks amazing, but like even the fastest gaming computer you can buy can barely run it. So first, what I'm gonna show you is two games that got just really bad implementations of ray tracing. Uh, the first one being Elden Ring. Yeah, if you didn't know, Elden Ring got ray tracing, but it only got ray traced shadows, which if you didn't know, there's four parts to ray tracing. Ray traced shadows, ray traced uh, ambient occlusion, ray traced global illuminations and ray traced reflections and ideally you want a game to get all four of those things but ray tracing and the second game we're going to take a look at a plague tale requiem only got ray traced shadows which happens to be uh the hardest one to tell the difference between like it makes the smallest difference <laughs> so first i'm going to show you a side by side comparison of elden ring uh one side's going to have ray tracing off but all the settings turned up as high as it will go and the other side's going to have ray tracing on once again with all the settings turned up as high as they can go uh, and just see if you can tell the difference. I'm going to do a blind comparison first. So there you go. On the left side is the ray tracing one and on the right side is the uh, ray tracing off. And the difference was is just so tiny. And it's the same case really for a Plague Tale Requiem, although a Plague Tale Requiem is also an example for a game that didn't really need ray tracing. Uh, with all the settings turned up as high as it will go, it already looks super, super good. And when you turn ray tracing on, the, the difference once again is super tiny. And I will do another blind comparison to see if you can tell the difference. <laughs> and with this one, I'm once again going to guess you probably won't be able to tell the difference unless you know what you're looking for. And even me knowing what like ray trace shadows looks like and how to tell the difference it's still really hard to tell the difference so yeah on the right side ray tracing was on and on the left side ray tracing was off and i think this just just goes to show you that one some games just don't need ray tracing or if you're going to put a ray tracing in a game that already looks extremely good you might as well go the whole nine yards and do all four parts you know to make it look as good as possible but then you also got to take into consideration that games that already look really good are, are, are already pretty hard to run. So adding full implementation of ray tracing to them is going to make them even harder to run so that people probably aren't going to want to use it. <laughs> All right, so now that we've looked at some games that got some really bad implementations of ray tracing, let's look at some games that got full ray tracing support and we're going to do some blind comparisons. Uh, the four games that we're going to look at is Fortnite, Hogwarts Legacy, uh, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, and Cyberpunk 2077. And for these comparisons, since there's a really big FPS difference between the two uh, clips, like with RTX on and RTX off, uh, we're going to use screenshots so that you can't tell the difference between the choppiness of the video. And when you're looking at these screenshots, what I want you to do is not really try and focus on which one has ray tracing and like analyzing the images and all that, but like at first glance, figure out which one you think looks better. All right, the first game that we're going to look at here is Fortnite, and Fortnite has a pretty good implementation of ray tracing. You can usually tell like as soon as it's on, you can you can tell. So I'm going to show you the two screenshots right up on screen, and you just got to figure out which one you think has ray tracing and which one you think looks better. So yeah, I'll leave them. I'll leave it up there for a couple of seconds. All right, and for this one, ray tracing was turned off on the right side and turned on on the left side. And I feel like you guys probably got that one right. It is pretty easy to tell when it's on in Fortnite. And also, I do think ray tracing does look better in Fortnite. Although Fortnite, it's kind of weird that that game even has ray tracing support since it's a battle royale game. Uh, usually games like those don't really prioritize graphics, but hey, that's okay. <laughs> but the next game that we're going to look at here is going to be Hogwarts Legacy. And this game is kind of weird. I actually prefer the ray tracing turned off 
uh, than with it on, not only because of the FPS difference, but also I think the reflections in uh, with ray tracing turned off look better than when it's turned on. But we'll see what you think, so here, take a look. Alright, and for this one, ray tracing was turned on on the left side and turned off on the right side. And I'm interested to see what you guys think about that one because I do honestly think that ray tracing or ray tracing turned off sometimes looks better than ray tracing turned on. Alright, the next game that we're going to look at here is going to be The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. I mean, if you didn't know, this game did get ray tracing support in the next gen update that was like three months ago, four months ago, somewhere around there. And this is one of them games where there's a really big difference between the two, although it's not necessarily like a good difference. Like I feel like some of you guys might think that ray tracing turned off might look better than with it turned on, but we'll see. So yeah, take a look. All right, and for that one, ray tracing was turned on on the left side and turned off on the right side so yeah let me know what you think about that one but the last game that we're going to look at here is going to be cyberpunk 2077 and i'm including this game to really show you what ray tracing can do especially with the new overdrive feature in uh cyberpunk it looks just unbelievably good and this one it should be blatantly obvious which one's which but yeah take a look at the two screenshots and yeah one of these has the overdrive ray tracing turned on which is also called path tracing and the other one is just ultra settings with ray tracing turned off and for this one it should have been really obvious which one was which but ray tracing was turned on on the right side and turned off on the left side and that one it was really just to show you the capabilities of ray tracing to show you how good it can look even in a game that already has really good graphics and this is just why it's sad to see some games just getting super terrible ray tracing implementations like with Elden Ring and a Plague Tale Requiem like you can't even tell when it's turned on but you still get like a 20 fps decrease so it's like man what the heck <laughs> but you also got to keep in mind that overdrive feature is like extremely hard to run in, in a cyberpunk 2077 like i think i've seen in a benchmark uh that like the 4090 without frame generation was getting like 40 fps with path, tra path tracing or the overdrive feature turned on but that actually brings me to my last point and that is that some games get full ray tracing support but it doesn't even matter because the game without ray tracing is so terribly optimized that you can barely run the game without ray tracing, which makes the ray tracing irrelevant because then you would get even worse performance. So, I mean, game really good examples of this is like uh, Starfield Jedi Survivor, uh, The Last of Us Part 1 PC. Uh, I know that game when it first launched was really bad. It had terrible optimization. But I know after it's gotten some updates now, I don't know exactly how it runs now. I've been thinking about buying it and making a video on it, but... I don't know it's 70 bucks so but either way uh, that game when it first released it wasn't optimized good at all and it probably still isn't optimized that good <laughs> which then it's like why did you even bother putting ray tracing in when the game itself without it, it already runs terrible you know <laughs> usually it's ray tracing that makes the game run terrible and not just the game itself <laughs> but yeah to sum this video all up i do still think ray tracing is bad and it's just not worth using i think the technology is really cool but i just don't think it's there yet with like the power of the gpus and all that and I probably wouldn't even be making this video if just ever if just think of every game that got ray tracing got the same like ray tracing support that uh, Cyberpunk did, then that would eliminate the issue of some games just getting terrible in ray tracing implementations. And then also if every game just was optimized good, like when it first released, not after a couple updates, when it first released, it was optimized good and it could actually run on most systems. And then you, then you add a good ray tracing support on top of it, then it would probably eliminate all the issues there. But considering all the most recent releases of like Star Wars Jedi Survivor, uh, Last of Us Part 1 PC, um, I think another one that was really badly optimized was Resident Evil 4 Remake. Um, based off those games, that's probably not going to happen, but yeah. Um, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you agree with me, or if you disagree, that's that's okay too. But yeah, like this video if you thought it was any good, and subscribe because I probably make more videos similar to this on my channel. But yeah, hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.